rand after speaking this morning. Of course, we opened at 7.17 on the dollar rand. Eleni just pointing out that we're now at 7.21 on the dollar rand. And pretty much range trading at this stage. But we've got to take into account that we did go to that 7.12 level on Friday and I mentioned to you this morning that Simon Smollett from Credit Agricole says that technically we headed for 650 very quickly through 650 to 6 on the dollar rand. Can you share your sentiments again David on this front? Sure, Bronwyn. Just just uh, to a bit of today's action given the US Labor Day holiday. It's a very quiet session dominated by importers uh, and that's why we're seeing some of the weakness filtering through pushing the rand up to the 721, 722 area. But uh, Friday's uh, data coming out of the U.S. has added some impetus uh, because basically what it shows is that rates around the world will be kept lower for longer. South Africa, is, South Africa is still a very good yield destination. As long as equities remain uh, fairly buoyant and, 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 and uh, benign price action, that will be supported for the RAND going forward. Moving to the MPC decision on Thursday, as I said earlier, the market is expecting a rate cut of 50 basis points. Some economists even banding about 100 basis points in terms of coming off the repo rate, which currently sits at 6.5%. Six, six but David, as we were saying earlier, it's not really going to make any long-term difference to the RAND if we see the interest rates being cut on the local front at this stage, given the fact, as you point out, that interest rates in the rest of the world are close to zero. And unless we saw 5% locked off local interest rates, we just can't compare. Foreigners will be searching for yield and they will deploy money into the local unit. Well, that's the point. Interest rate movements will have a short-term impact on, 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 on the currency. But, you know, as long as that global situation is in play and, and, and uh, lower rates for a longer period of time, uh, you know, and, and a sort of benign global economy, then the hunt for yield will remain in place. And, and, and uh, you know, we've seen what, what, what we have seen recently is uh, that the Chinese uh, authorities are moving into buying hard commodities. Uh, that is also supportive for currencies like the RAND. So everything at the moment in play, but you know, things change very, very quickly. But I wouldn't be surprised to see the RAND heading towards the lower sort of seven levels uh, towards the end of the week. And I don't think uh, an interest rate move uh, at, at this point in time, certainly on the interest rate front, it's, uh, bonds and frauds are pricing in a 50, 50 point cut. Uh, and I, I, I suspect that the RAND market is pricing in uh, part of that cut as well. So should they cut 50 basis points, we might see a short term knee jerk reaction slightly weaker but over the medium term as long as those factors remain in place you know there's nothing to stop the rand from going to seven at this point if they don't cut david can we expect the rand to suffer a knee-jerk reaction in the other direction and trade well, uh, strong against the u.s dollar well the last time that happened at the last mpc meeting when they didn't cut interest rates as as the market perhaps expected we did see a very very quick reaction of the rand and in fact that's what drove the rand through 750 uh, at that point in time and we haven't seen the RAND trade weaker than that subsequent to that decision. So I, I think a similar, a similar move will be in place. If they don't cut interest rates, I think the RAND will, will strengthen very quickly. Just quickly updating on the euro dollar, as you pointed out, the, the US is closed for Labor Day holiday. But if you look at the jobs data out on Friday, we did see the, the US dollar gaining some traction. However, now with renewed risk appetite, the euro is stronger. We touched earlier today 129.18 on the upside. Where do you expect this exchange rate to go? Are you leaning towards a stronger euro in the medium term? Uh, Bronwyn, it's hard for me to say at this point in time. I think both Europe and America have got similar, similar problems at this point in time. Uh, the difference being that Europe has, has started to address their problems, the fiscal imbalances that do exist. Uh, Europe has done a lot of work from, from, from the likes of Ireland and Greece and Portugal, Spain, other nations as well. Uh, the U.S. hasn't, ha you know, hasn't even started to look at their fiscal problems. So if we if we see the kind of environment that's that's playing out at the moment, uh, I think the U.S. will be, will gain more attention as far as their problems, their deficit problems are concerned, and perhaps from that perspective, on a macro view, then the dollar can weaken. Uh, but you know, Europe is is not a great uh, example of of what the economy should look like either. So I think more and more the the euro will be stuck in a sort of 120, 127, 132 range for the foreseeable future. Uh, with a slightly weakening bias for the dollar. And then the poor Japanese, we, we can't stem that strength in the yen. And earlier today, we saw the US dollar heading to that 15 year low again to, to the yen. Are you expecting any intervention from the Japanese government or are the Japanese just going to have to live with the stronger currency? 
I, I must admit, Bronwyn, I'm a bit, little bit perplexed by the yen's price action. Uh, you know, they've been they've, the, the problems that the U.S. and the and Europe are experiencing. Japan has had for the last 20 years. So I'm a little bit perplexed by the strength of the of the Japanese yen. As to intervention, uh, the authorities said last week that they're very, very reluctant to go it alone. They're very concerned about the level of the yen at this point in time, but they, but you know, they don't want to be the odd man out and, and be the only one intervening to weaken their currency. So I don't see that uh, playing itself out. But I must admit, it's very hard for me to see further yen strength or dramatically further yen strength from these levels. And then just very quickly, David, if you were to cash out of local rands and into one of the currencies in the developed world, what would that be? Well, obviously, uh, Swiss franc is, 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 is uh, the safe haven, the global safe haven at the moment, probably uh, the best uh, economy, although they also don't have much growth, but you know, they've managed the fiscal imbalances quite well. So Swiss franc, from a developed uh, currency point of view, that, that would be the one that I'd be picking.